everybody. This is Chef Dana in our Phoenix Test Kitchen. And today I have a special guest with us, Tim Murphy from Alto Sham. Welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited. Great. So today we're going to be talking about sea stores and our wonderful vector, the Alto Sham vector. So Tim's going to talk a little bit about himself here. And, you know, we don't want him to talk too much. They only bring me here for my good looks. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I hope everybody's well. So. The Vector Oven is a new piece of technology. Actually, it's about three years old now. Um, we've been in the market. We're having great success in the C-Store world. We want to share some of that success with some of y'all and see where this piece of equipment, you're going to find it advantageous for your operation. Expand your menu, maybe go to some more fresh foods, maybe get away from some of the microwave assist, um, improve your food quality. So that's kind of our goal here today. Um, we're going to be talking about various aspects of the oven, but the most important thing is we're gonna get here to cooking pretty quick. Let's do it. All right, let's go. What are we gonna cook first? So we're gonna start off with uh, fresh bacon. We're gonna put that in the oven at 450 degrees. In our second chamber, we're gonna be doing hash browns. These are frozen. We're gonna be doing those at 400 degrees. And finally at the bottom, fresh cinnamon rolls down at the bottom at 350. Oven's fully programmable. So we just go into our programming. I scroll down to our File, I'm going to hit bacon, and it starts. Next, I'm going to go to chamber two. Again, go to the same file. That's what we're calling our breakfast. Find the hash browns and start those. Go to our final chamber. Scroll down. Find the cinnamon buns, cinnamon rolls, and we're off to the races. So. I think I, just, I think I covered it. We're at 450 at the top, 400 at the bottom, or 400 in the middle and 350 at the bottom. So literally at three different temperatures all in the same oven. You may notice over here on the counter that there's some biscuits that are already cooked off. We cook those biscuits off simply so that you can see what a four chamber oven would do. So that's kind of representing our four chamber oven. So those are 2.2 ounce frozen Pillsbury biscuit pucks took about 16 and a half minutes. What do you think so far? Awesome. And Tim, in addition to the different temperatures, yeah. what else can we control in the vector? Well, each of these chambers is technically an individual oven. So we can control chamber temperature, we can control fan speed, and we can control cook time. So looking at this, we started with bacon at eight and a half minutes and 450 and 70% fan. The hash browns are at 400 degrees, 100% fan for 11 minutes. So a couple of examples there, the different, uh, different properties we can control in the cook. Awesome. And then also we're cooking bacon, which gives off a smell because it's been smoked. Yeah. And we're also cooking bread, yeah. cinnamon rolls. Absolutely. So it's a great question. So nobody's going to cook uh, sauteed onions and cookies in the same convection oven. That would never work because nobody really wants onions that taste like cookies. So in this particular case, I think I got you there. On this particular <laughs> case, we are cooking bacon, which does put off quite a bit of odor, um, quite a bit of flavor transfer. Because these are individual chambers, we really don't have to worry about that at all. And the proof is really in the pudding when we, when we chow down on the cinnamon rolls. The cinnamon rolls, rolls are awesome. Later and and they're, we're not gonna even have a hint of bacon. Awesome, and even, even the biscuits too. Even the biscuits, now yeah. we did cook the biscuits by themselves, but typically we cook biscuits and bacon or sausage all at the same time. We've cooked fish with cookies and the onions and cookies example, anything that's gonna absorb flavors and, and uh, put flavors off, you typically don't cook together in a convection oven, but no problem here. Awesome, and also we have this one underneath a hood. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we, norm we wouldn't normally, we wouldn't have, this doesn't have to be under a hood. You know, it, it's, uh, it is it is 100% hoodless. And in our industry, hoodless is kind of a, uh, an undefined uh, uh, term, if you will. So we are hoodless in the fact that we can cook all raw proteins without being underneath the hood. So we're certified for that through UL. Awesome. So we have all that documentation. Two of the hardest areas to put ventless equipment in California and New York City the entire state of California, New York City. And we have equipment in all of those areas without any problem. We now have full approval in New York City after our two year trial period. So uh, yeah, we are 100% ventless. One of the reasons it's kind of undefined, if you think about the microwave assist market, they are hoodless as well, but they are not hoodless for raw proteins. So you can't cook sausage, you can't cook bacon, you can't cook raw skin on chicken and still hold that ventless certification. 
we have that ventless certification, so you are not limited into what products that you cook. So awesome. Yeah, awesome. great, great point. And how does the is this microwaves or what is this? You know, this is just controlled hot air. That's the only thing we're doing. We're heating air and we're delivering the air in an all new way. With a convection oven or a combi oven, the air either blows from the side or from the back. So you get all these hot spots in the oven and the cold spots in the oven. So you're rotating pans and twisting pans and so forth and so on. What we've done is we've taken the air from a horizontal position and we've moved it to a uh, vertical position. So the air in each of these chambers is actually blowing from the top and the bottom. This is the international sign for <laughs> air coming from the top and the bottom. So it comes from the top and the bottom. It is completely even throughout. That pan of biscuits that uh, we'll get a picture of for you here at some point, but that pan of biscuits was never rotated and never turned. And this is, this is a result of that air coming from the top and the bottom and the nice, smooth, um, even air, even results. Here, check this out. Like even consistency all the way around. We actually have one customer who um, is purchasing the oven uh, strictly for the for the baking of biscuits that was their original goal and their goal was to have a more even cook um, it, it's a well-known group that I unfortunately can't name the name of but um, <laughs> they've been very very successful in, in cooking biscuits and getting a new even cook and they really feel like it's it's saving them a lot of labor it's saving them a lot of wasted products so pretty cool stuff awesome and also the the air technology we can even open the door Everything's going to continue to cook Yeah, because we have an air curtain. Absolutely. One of my favorite things about the oven and what I often do in demos is I leave the door open and then I get my hand, my eyes on whoever, whoever is in a culinary outfit out in the, out in the audience. And I, I, I take a look and I know this door staying open really bothers them. So I take and I close the door and I relieve them a little bit of their anxiety. <laughs> but being able to leave the door open as a result of this air coming from the top and the bottom, it's immediately drawn into the return air, which is inside the oven. Whereas with a convection oven, you get that blast of air. We get no blast of air because the air is coming from the top and the bottom being drawn back in. So that air curtain that you used, it's a great term, right. gives us a lot of benefits. It gives us a cooler door. We don't worry about that blowback of all that air. We have better air retention inside the oven, so much, much faster recovery. There's just great stuff about that about that very unique airflow. Awesome, awesome. And we saw when you were we were putting the food in here, the programmability of the oven. Right. You can have consistency. Absolutely. Same product, same cooking methods. Absolutely. By you or Joe Schmo down the road. No doubt. You know, <laughs> we talk a lot about, about Johnny. Poor Johnny's always in trouble, and we're going to use Johnny as an example here again as well. So Johnny doesn't think the chef cooks the biscuits the right way. So when the chef isn't there, he's always undercooking the biscuits. Chef comes in on Sunday, or excuse me, on Tuesday, customers from Monday are complaining the biscuits weren't done. Well, that's because he's using convection oven and little Johnny's just pulling the, pulling the product out early. Now with the programmability, Johnny doesn't really have a choice. He goes and he hits biscuits, and when it's done, it beeps. You pull the biscuits out and you get that consistency. Not only do you get that consistency from cook to cook, you get that consistency from store to store. And we all know that's hugely important to make sure that we are, um, that we're the same cook from one side of town to the other side of town or from one city to the other city. Awesome, and you can also download those recipes. Yeah, we have a couple of ways we can download recipes. Number one, we can use a, a USB to move the recipes from one oven to the other. We also have what we call ChefLink, which is a networking system. So we can actually use it during, or push recipes and pull recipes via the internet, via the old World Wide Web. So uh, <laughs> www. www. So we're all World Wide Webbed with the, uh, with the Vector Oven. We're really excited about that. That's just been rolled out in about the last five or six months. So uh, really having get, getting some great feedback, that, that need for information as a society that we've been so accustomed to. Now you can know what's happening to each and every one of your pieces of equipment uh, at the moment, right. no having to right. wait. And this is a small footprint too, Yeah, just about 20, 21 inches. Yeah, 21 inches wide. So uh, I know it's gonna be hard to believe for somebody to hear me say that I can do as much, I can do as much throughput in this oven as I can do in a full size convection oven. But that comes down to the fact that we have this, this much, much faster cook um, and in just this 21 inches. So I'll, I'll go up against a full size convection oven and a four chamber vector any day. and and uh, throughput's not an issue. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the light on oh, so boy, we can we see. 
And the bacon's see, almost got, done. Yeah. So uh, you're going to see here some unique attributes to this. Number one, the, uh, the, the controller is showing the chamber one's ready to cook. The handle is flashing. And, and the chamber. only the chamber that has product being finished is flashing. So we're going to go ahead and pull that bacon out. Looks good. And after the bacon, we have scheduled link sausage. So we're going to go right into the oven with link sausage. Remember, we talked about that airflow. And one of the nice things is I can go through this process and change the next product without having to worry about any negative impact on the items that are already in the oven. So being able to open and close the door while the product is cooking, really, really important. So looking at this bacon, you may think to yourself, well, Tim, that's a little well done for me, or Tim, that's a little underdone for me. It's the perfect thing about the programmability. If you buy a vector, you're not going to be left alone. You're going to end up with somebody at your location. We're going to help you with all of your recipe settings. And from there, we're going to get what is your gold standard. So sometimes when we do cooks, we do things on purpose that might be a little light to show you and to talk through the idea that we don't leave you alone. We make sure that you have some support. It's a, something that Altersham is very proud of. And that's where we come in, really, is the local reps. Absolutely. Yeah. And having the local kitchens and the local reps, an expert that isn't in Wisconsin or isn't in Dallas, such as I am, having somebody right here in your area, having this beautiful facility so that you can come and use it. It's, uh, it's really a great opportunity for you to come in, low-stress low area. We're not in your store trying to do test cooking in the store and interrupting yeah. your business. Yeah, so. you can come right into, into our contestants kitchen and Absolutely. bring your products in here 100 and we can test out all of your recipes before you even buy the oven absolutely and at the same time you get to see some other equipment see some other solutions that may be valuable for your organization we truly believe the vector belongs in every convenience store in the u.s but we have other solutions to your to your challenges to your operational challenges as well yeah we also have the the merchandise holders too yeah the hot merchandisers are really big right now we're trying to reduce the number of touch points and so forth and so on to be able to take some of this food, assemble some breakfast sandwiches, do some scrambled eggs if you wanted, and to be able to put it in a hot merchandiser. I think if you get the opportunity to see our hot merchandiser, it really, really, really pops, uh, really gets people's attention the minute they walk in the door. I think we'll find, you'll find that real valuable and your customers will just naturally be drawn to it. You know what's going to happen here in the next couple minutes. We're going to get crazy busy. Yes, we're going we to be are cruising along here so our hash browns are going to come out here in about just a couple few seconds we're going to pull the hash browns out and i'm looking at my little cheat sheet here and i'm going to put in some fried eggs and well i like to talk about fried eggs so that's what we're going to we're going to go through here real quick so we're going to take this pan here and we're going to put six yolk broken fried eggs into the oven that's why i'm moving slow so i don't spill them at the same time that this has occurred our cinnamon rolls are also done. And after our cinnamon rolls, we're going in with fresh waffle batter. This is not a frozen product. This is actually fresh waffle batter. So we're going to go into chamber three with that. Two chambers uh, completed at the same time. So we're going to go to our recipe book. Go to our file. We're going to find fried eggs. There we go there. We're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to find our fresh waffles back into our file. And you'll notice there's pictures that you can put into the program on the deluxe controls as well. So I love to talk about, my, one of my cameras just disappeared. What happened here? We love to talk <laughs> about fried eggs. Fried eggs in an oven just really isn't possible. This is a very, very good example of how this very structured air cooks evenly. When we pull these eggs out, we broke the yolks. I'm not sure if you were able to see that. The one here on the counter, we're gonna go with the yolks unbroken, so sunny side. To be able to do this in an oven, one of the things we like to brag about with the, with the Vector is the fact that we can help relieve or replace certain pieces of equipment. If you don't have the hood space and you can't use a flat top, how are you gonna cook fried eggs? You can't Well, have we're eggs. doing it right now. We're gonna, we're gonna shock you a little bit the way we do that. So, and we're actually gonna do two pans of it. Another thing I wanted to point out, we were busy there changing pans again. These cinnamon rolls, if you look at how tall those are, we often hear from our bakery customers of how much more rise they get out of bakery products. Pretty cool stuff. We are uh, pretty doggone proud of that. These are just um, grams that you buy from the grocery store. 
nothing real complicated here, but look at the rise on that product. And boy, you put that in the right merchandiser and the right packaging, that's really going to get some pop customers. Going I'd buy it. Screen. I would, I, I have. And the consistency, I mean, you turn this pan around and you've got complete, even, consistent browning all the way around all sides. We and never you know, touch the pan. And it needs to be stated. These are a little dark for some people. This is my gold standard. Once again, you get a piece of equipment, we're gonna come in and show you how to create your gold standard. If it's different than mine, it's probably wrong, but we'll still help <laughs> you out anyway. So here in just a minute or two, we're gonna put the icing on there. We're really gonna have you all salivating right through the, right through the lens you're, you're watching That's from. Right. Just another minute and a half on our sausage links and that first pan of eggs. We're gonna do a little flatbread uh, breakfast pizza and some more eggs when those, are, when those items are done. And there's redundancy. I mean, you can, you don't, it's, you're going to get the same thing, whether, you know, Johnny does it or the manager does yeah. it or the chef does it. You know, you use the word redundancy and I like to talk about a couple of things when we talk about redundancy. Yes, that speaks to consistency. That speaks to the same cook every time. But when we get into a mechanical situation, um, moving parts break. Somewhere down the road, a motor's going to go on, on one of these chambers. Your motor goes on your convection oven, you're done. You have nothing yep. to cook with. Down and you, out. You lose a motor in chamber number one, I'm still cooking with chamber number two and three. So having that built into redundancy, knowing that it's not going to completely shut down your operation when you do have a, a part that needs to be replaced over some time, right. uh, really great feature of the oven. So yeah. great point. That's Good awesome. Good question. Awesome. Good question. So you again, you can see the controller, a couple things you, can, you may notice, and I don't know how close we can get the camera, but if you see here, we have a cook progress bar. We are a very visual company. We love to be able to, to show you various uh, uh, visuals. We talked about the blinking chamber. We talked about the, the controller saying done, but you can also see this progress bar. So if I stand in the back of the room, I promise you I can't see the clock, old man, bad eyes can't see the clock clicking down, but I can certainly see that red bar. So from a distance, I know that I'm approaching the end of my cook. Man, see, you know, I'm talking too much. I need to get to work. <laughs> so here come our uh, hard yolk eggs. And we're gonna put in the sunny side up. And sure enough, as we are going, the top chamber finished up. So we're gonna put in another item in the top chamber. So go all the way to the bottom, hit our sunny side up. Now we need to pull the uh, sausage links. You can see why I don't do a demo by myself. Because when you get to cooking, <laughs> there's a lot of happening. work to do. But yet, as we stand here and as we, cook, as we cook, you'll notice I'm not rotating any pans. I'm not turning any pans. Yes, I'm a little busy when my product starts coming out. But instead of monitoring my convection oven, what am I doing with that labor? I'm chopping, I'm dicing, I'm cleaning. If I talk to the big wigs in a company, I say, we can reduce your labor. But if I talk to somebody at the store level, they don't want a reduction in level. They want in labor. They want yeah. more labor. So yeah. what we talk about is reassigning that labor is, is putting that labor to work, doing something else rather than just staring into the oven, making sure that everything's cooking. You could be prepping the pans for the next load. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So quickly you're seeing what's happening here. We've been going for about 16 minutes, 15 minutes and the food is really piling up here. You're getting a lot of different kinds of products here that you wouldn't do in a typical convection oven. From the sausage links with the nice browning, the bacon we've already gone over, you've got your hash browns without a fryer, you got your fried eggs without a flat top. You know, we're not gonna take over every piece of equipment, but if you've got a flat top that's overburdened, knowing that you have some extra capacity inside your vector, if you've got your deep fat fryer, you got those, you've only got one and it's humming along, you don't have any more hood space, all of a sudden you can take some friable products or products that are fried products but bakeable and you can take some heat off of that, off of that piece of equipment. So really uh, just so much that you can do. I know this is sitting under a hood. I know it's a little bit um, deceiving that we say it's hoodless, but trust me when I tell you, I'll send you the documentation that comes from UL. Trust me when I tell you this doesn't have to be under the hood. Hood space is anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 per linear foot to say nothing, to say nothing about the annual cost of cleaning it, upkeeping it, 
the electricity. So it's not a one-time savings. It's a savings over the life of the oven. And everybody so, loves cleaning a hood. Everybody loves cleaning a hood. <laughs> it doesn't disrupt your operation at all to have all that greasy water flowing through your kitchen. Another thing, Tim, we can have different chambers. Like we can have a two chamber, oh, three yeah. chamber. We can stack these. We didn't. We talked a little bit about it that we can have a fourth chamber. We also have a two chamber and the three chamber that you're seeing now. Give me one minute. I can't talk right now. I got to work. Okay. Okay. So here's something that will kind of catch your eye. Could you make some room for me, please? I, I, yes, I will. Excuse Here me. Here are our waffles that I showed you were fresh waffle batter. All of a sudden, we can have waffles on the Sunday brunch. Oh, we're convenience stores. We don't do Sunday brunch. All of a sudden, we can do a chicken and waffle breakfast sandwich, limited time offer. And we don't even have the, the waffle press to do it. Is it the greatest waffle maker in the world? I don't know. We could talk about that all day. But if you don't want to go through that waffle maker process and having to have that iron that you're carrying around to different places. Somebody maintaining yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're required to buy the, the product from a particular to get the waffle iron free. You gotta buy it from you gotta buy the product. Here you're not limited. This is Krusty's waffle mix I bought from the grocery store. And all of a sudden I've got my, my waffles, my hash brown, some bacon, and a fried egg. That's one heck of a breakfast sandwich that you're cranking out of your convenience store. You know, your convenience stores, you gotta, you, you want to make sure you're making money. You're looking at that sandwich of being $3.99. Your food cost is going to be somewhere around a dollar and a quarter. So you're looking at food cost under 30%. Sunny not, side up. Not eggs. many convenience stores are, uh, are looking at food costs at, or product costs at, at 30%. So really adding some money to your bottom line. We're down to just one product. It's our, our, our flatbread. And we are out of counter space. So we're going to start doubling up here a little bit. But this is just a pretty simple breakfast flatbread. We put some scrambled eggs on there. We put some that I cooked in the vector. We put some bacon in there that we cooked on the vector. Some shredded cheese uh, on a, on a non bread that you could buy just about anywhere. And you've got a, a super nice product that you're producing. Again, probably $4.99 selling price. Food cost in the area of somewhere around 35, 40%. So the rest of it goes to the bottom line. You're making money. So how long do you think all this food took to cook? I would say at least 25, 30 minutes. No, the, all this food took 18 minutes to cook. The longest chamber in our cook here was 18 minutes. So uh, if this didn't turn your head, you need to check your pulse. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> well, great. Thanks for coming today, Tim. Hey, what a good time. Uh, check it out. We're on the web at uh, altasham.com, that worldwide web thing, whatever that is. Or ignitefoodservice.com. Or ignitefoodservice.com. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.